What's up, family? Welcome back to another legendary reaction video. So we got NBA media caught lying about the dream team. Let's go. Anthony Davis on this team is a much better player than Patrick Ewing. Give me a break. Ta Boy, no, you didn't just start being disrespectful already. Five seconds into this video, you better get out of here, nigga. You crazy. You talking about Anthony Davis needs some milk in his bones? Man, you better go ahead somewhere. Much better than Scottie Pippen. LeBron right now is better than Magic was to me at 32 or 33 years old. Trash! All picked! This is the shot they get. Our young guys are in. <laughs> what the f? Bro, you better go ahead somewhere, bro. In Halliburton, their young guy was Christian Leitner. Give me a break. Well, here's, here's the problem that I have, and no disrespect to the 1992 Olympic team, but half of those guys were a little past their prime. You sit on a throne of lies. Mm. I think this is from a talent and still in their prime or guys who have aged out of their prime but are still great. Bro, who is this guy right here with this Christopher Columbus slick back hairstyle, bro? This guy, has he ever played basketball? Who is Nick Wright, bro? He always talking about something, bro. Like, bro. Perspective, this is the best collection of talent in Team USA history. Why are you lying like this? When it comes to sports fans, there are very few things that are undisputed and not really debated. And one of those things is the greatest basketball team ever assembled. As the majority of fans is the 92 Dream Team. And looking at this squad, not only 11 Hall of Famers, but the way they won gold was in historic fashion. I don't know anything about Angola, but mm. Angola's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a famous one. I don't know about Angola, but Angola in trouble. Angola, Angola, Angola trash. Mm. And by the score of 116 to 48. In terms of sheer dominance global impact, the 92 Dream Team will never be touched. But still, with that being the case, you have current day analysts like Nick Wright, Brian Windhorst, and now Colin Cowherd saying the current Team USA in 2024 is actually better than the 92 Dream Team. Basketball is so much better now than it's ever been. Um, I mean, the game is incredible. J the game evolved, yeah, from, you know, technology and, you know, Basketball player health and longevity and sustainability in regards to the game and, you know, nutrition and things like that. You know, they have a better, you know, mental health and things like that. Don't get me wrong about that. No doubt about it. But I don't know. I don't know if this team USA right here. I don't know. Tatum uh, did not start last night. He's better than Scottie Pippen. Offensively, it's not particularly close. It's a global sport. Everybody can shoot. Everybody can handle I don't the ball. Think, comment down below, family. Do you think Jason Tatum defense is better than Scotty Pimpins? I'm going to have to go with a no. I think Scotty Pimpin got a better defense, the best defense than Tatum, bro. The 92 Dream Team, Larry Bird was shot. He retired 10 days after the Olympics. You had multiple guys on that team, multiple who could not handle the ball and who couldn't shoot. So stopping Cal Well, Scotty, Larry Bird was coming. Larry Bird's retired anyway. He came back in regards, um, he came back in regards to reunite, reunite with his boy, with his man Magic. And they was their last, they gonna play together their last time, if I believe if I believe I'm right. Correct me if I'm wrong, but bro, what are you talking about? Right there, already a few ridiculous takes. As a debating basketball eras, which era's better? Saying this era is better because of pure offensive skill, I mean, eh, kind of a flimsy argument. And Collins' two points he goes to. Players nowadays on Team USA, all of them can handle the rock. Also, all of them can shoot. Yeah, For the most part, that is true. But Ooh. I wouldn't say that fact alone proves this current team is better than 92 team. And in discussing which era is better, which era is harder, I would say guys nowadays in the NBA are allowed to do more things with lenient rules that wouldn't fly in past eras. I can tell Joe and B was playing around in practice because my man was definitely baiting with those fouls. <laughs> I seen that. Nice pass. Sharp bounce, Embiid got decked. 
if you want to talk sheer offensive versatility, the 24 team is pretty great. But talking the best offensive teams, the best offensive USA teams, the 08 team, the 2012 team, and especially the 92 team, clear this current team by a country mile. And coward in this segment for some odd reason. I feel like the dream team back then with Jordan and them was considered a threat, boy. Like, I did. they were scared of them boys. Now it's like the overall league, international-wise, they got some game, bro. They ain't. They coming with a threat as too. They coming with a threat too with their team from a from a competitive standpoint. You know what I'm saying? Internationally has gotten better. International basketball alone has gotten better and definitely evolved. You got Jokic out there. You got come on, man. Starts comparing Scottie Pippen to Jason Tatum. Um, I mean the game is incredible. Jason Tatum did not start last night. He's better than Scottie Pippen offensively. It's not particularly close. Now, this comparison right here is odd for a couple of reasons. First off, because Tatum on the current team is debatably their best overall player. Pippen 92 was like their fifth, sixth, even seventh best player behind guys like Jordan, Barkley, Malone, Drexler, Robinson, and Ewing. So comparing Tatum debatably the best player on Team USA to Pippen, kind of an unfair comparison. But even with that being said, looking at Pippen as a wingman, kind of playing a second exactly. fiddle role. Pippen was like a, he knew his role. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't an offensive threat. He wasn't an offensive threat as much as Jason Tatum is. But from a defensive standpoint, I feel like Tatum ain't got nothing on him. Compared to JT, he is better in that role. As looking at Pippen in 92 for the NBA, first team all defense, third in DPOY, Eight boards, seven assists, two steals, and one block per game. Pippen at this point in his career could realistically guard one through four. And he played in the current era, could guard one through five pretty easily. Big strong moves to the basket this evening. Came back with the goggles to protect those Look, eyes. Yes, locked down. The start of the goggles. Pippen locking him down, bro. Pippen to... lock that man down, bro. And if you want to take a defense to another screen, you got Dennis Robin. He like a pest when it comes to defense, boy. He don't get out of him. He don't stop. That man don't. That man don't get tired. That man don't. That man don't get tired. When I say he don't get tired, he don't get tired. So the fact Howard's comparing Tatum, the basically the best player on Team USA now, to Scottie Pippen, who wasn't a top five player, that is pretty telling to which team was actually better. You had multiple guys on that team, multiple, who could not handle the ball and who couldn't shoot. Anthony Davis on this team is a much better player than Patrick Ewing. Give me a break. Tatum's hold on, hold on, much. Bro. Anthony Davis ain't got no handles like that, bro. But Scottie Pippen, LeBron right now is better, better than, than Magic Shaq. was to Damn me at 32 or 30. What do you say? Scottie Pippen, LeBron right now is better than Magic was to me at 32 or 33 years old. Our young guys are Ant and Halliburton. Their young guy was Christian Leitner. Give me a break. This team is old men aging very gracefully. So stopping Cowherd right there, his tactic of this video, it's pretty straightforward and simple. He's cherry picking certain comparisons that benefit the 2024 team. Of course, for example, AD vs. Pat Ewing, Tatum vs. Pippen, LeBron vs. Magic, and Anthony Edwards vs. Christian Leitner. And look, when Coward does these comparisons, who are the guys he's leaving out and not mentioning? Oh yeah, Michael Jeffrey Jordan, the greatest player of all time, Charles Barkley, Karl Malone, Clyde Drexler, and then David Robinson. This cross-comparison tactic is as slimy as it gets. If you want to compare these teams head-to-head, -head, best player versus best player, second player versus second best player, that's how you go about doing it. And looking at Michael Jordan, there is no player in the 24 team who comes close to him in 92. I mean, Jordan at that time was peaking as a player. When it came to the postseason, 34.5 points a game, 50% shooting, two steals. Yeah, because at that time, Michael Jordan was the new sheriff in town. It's about, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, Magic comparing to LeBron is no excuse. He had his whole little health issue going on. I don't know, man. 
don't get me wrong. As big men, Anthony Davis has shown the, the how the NBA have evolved in regards of a big guy. Because big guy like Patrick Ewing ain't had no handles. Shaq ain't had no handles. Anthony, AD got a little bit more handles. You got Jokic sometimes bringing it down the court. He's another big man. But as far as Magic being better, I, I get it like this. LeBron, comment down below, fam. Do you guys believe that LeBron is way better than Magic in the Dream Team back then? I felt like Magic was already checking out. I feel like LeBron, yeah, LeBron is better. And I do agree he's picking selective players for, for a reason to, you know, obviously big up his stance, to have a strong stance in his point. First team all defense and third in the DPOY. And one of Jordan's so-called flaws was outside shooting. Well, in 92, 39% from deep and the finals, 43%. And one guy from Jordan's era was compared to him routinely was, of course, Clyde Drexler. And while Clyde wasn't MJ, I mean, this dude was still pretty spectacular. And looking at the 92 playoffs, his all-around game is severely underrated. 26 points per game, 7 boards, 7 assists, only 2 steals, and a block. Clyde that year, first team All-NBA and second MVP mm. to only Michael Jordan. Throws it away to Drexler. It's a two-on-one break. Drexler, oh, there's the Clyde. Now, looking past Clyde and MJ, the guys Coward also left out were Barkley, Malone, and David Robinson. And looking at Sir Charles first, a 93 post-Dream Team was the MVP, averaged 25-12-5, and, and led Phoenix the best record in the NBA. And Charles, much like Clyde that year, got Jordan comparisons as the best player in the Charles world. Charles was killing it. You heard him. He said, Nagola, Nagola better be scared. Now, looking at the previous year in 92, David Robinson, third in the MVP, first team all defense in the DPOY. Carl Malone, fourth in the MVP, first team all NBA, and sixth in the DPOY. But this, this team's bench has starters on that team. Scottie Pippen, I covered him in Portland. Not close to Jason Tatum. Patrick Ewing's not nearly as good as Anthony Davis. Christian Leitner on that team, Ant off the bench on this team. What are we talking about here? I feel like when it comes to Anthony Davis and Patrick Ewing, don't get me wrong, Patrick Ewing was dominating the paint, the big dude. Like, like going ham. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, beating the backboard type stuff. You know what I'm saying? AD got him on the three standpoint because AD got a dude that got a little corner three. Maybe a little bit handles, but I feel like Patrick Young will posterize AD, bro. Comment down below how y'all feel about that. No cap. The flexibility. The bigs now can handle the ball and shoot. So stopping Gallagher yeah, right there. I said that. This constant Pippen in comparison to Tatum, it's just, it's downright bizarre. Again, Pippen on the 92 Dream Team, a big piece for the success. Was he their best player, the top three player, even the top five player? I wouldn't say so. So why is being compared to Tatum so frequently? I really don't get. And one thing Khan also keeps repeating is the current Team USA offensively, much more skilled, refined, and versatile. And look, that's all fine and great. But when debating teams, versatility doesn't always mean you're better. As looking at the 92 team, what they had defensively in the post, in the paint, and the perimeter. No Team USA had both those things at the same time. As looking at the 92 team, they had Robinson and Ewing. 2008, Dwight and Bosch. Eh, pretty good. 2012, the big... I felt like Bosch was the start of a big, like a type of tall type of guy shooting threes, bro. Kevin Love definitely was a shooter. They can't have shooting the ball, bro. Abysmal, Kevin Love, Tyson Chandler. Now the 24 team, Anthony Davis and Embiid. That is some great size and protection and defensive yeah. big men. But the thing they don't have is a Jordan Pippen on the perimeter to hound guys 80 feet 24-7. I think they trying to I think they trying to make LeBron and Steph a little bit of that duo. Do you guys feel like LeBron and Steph is a little close to that 
Scotty Pimpin, Magic. I mean, Ma not Magic. Michael Jordan duo. I don't feel like they have it either. Look, when it comes to 2014, most likely, they're going to win gold. And that'll be fantastic and a great win for USA if they pull it off. But in terms of the best in USA's, I don't put them ahead of the 2008 team, the 92 team, even the 20. And Anthony Edwards been stepping up too, man. You know what I'm saying? This team, even according to Colin Coward, is an old team. That 92 team, Jordan, Pippen, Barkley, Malone, all those guys were late 20s, early 30s at the most. For Olympic play two-way dominance, stuff like that does matter. So, as always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Well, family, I'm curious to see you guys' opinion and perspective. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, family, peace.